previous <clears throat> previous year, which was the 50th. <laughs> well, they actually canceled a bunch of the um, mass ascensions because of high wind. Yeah, it, the year before they had a lot of rain. <laughs> They canceled a lot of stuff. Well, we went there really for the solar eclipse. Oh, right. And as we had the morning, you know, with the mass ascension and everything, my husband turns to me and he goes, who needs an eclipse? This is fantastic. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. How many days were you there? We, were, we showed up on Friday afternoon, so we went to the night glow. And then they did a drone show. Mm -hmm. And then we woke up at like four in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, and then left at 3.30. We were stuck in traffic before four o'clock. Took us over an hour to get into the parking lot. Yeah. And yeah. they closed the parking lot by 6.15 or 6.30. Yeah, I've never had, always going in as pilot or crew or media, we get passes to go in different directions. Wow. Okay. Well, in the old days, we used to have to sit in some traffic. The last couple of years, when I went as media, we had our own closed off route that we went in. Mm -hmm. it was pretty nice. Nice. Still had to get up at four in the morning, though. Cause... Well, and because it was the eclipse that was a few hours later, we ended up staying until like one o'clock. Okay, you got it, man. Thanks. <clears throat> it's. It was really kind of interesting how we went there. Oh, the Kurt is here. And then ended up enjoying something that we didn't even realize we wanted to be to have on our bucket list. <laughs> so Kurt is here. We've got this. Is Kurt, is Kurt uh, who's that other person? Oh, that's uh, um, John. Good. Okay, so Anthony Washington's on his way. There he is. He just hey, got guys. here. Fantastic. Hey, guys. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Earth calling Good morning. Anyone out there? Earth calling anyone out there? <laughs> this is Lakeside, California, calling anyone in the ether. Can you hear me? Is Lakeside, California, safe from all the? <laughs> it depends on the weather you're using. Hey, good morning, Essence. Good morning, IB Wizard. We've got uh, good morning. Another. Another uh, RT viewer, welcome, Commander Root. Welcome, Dog7. Welcome, Drapsnap. Welcome, Essence. I know there's a bunch more starting to jump in now. So um, welcome to the Photoshop music meeting. We're going to get started in a few minutes. We're just getting our judges uh, organized and oriented and all that stuff. So. That will never happen. <laughs> 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 They're almost all here. Jenny, and I'm hoping Cynthia will join us as well. Um, all the ladies, I, all the ladies were out of town. They were out of town on trips or jobs or they Wait, couldn't. What make... are Jenny and my chop liver? Mm -hmm. okay, I said I said all the other ladies. I I I I I I we have great lady photographers and at eight of them I invited, and they were all out of town. It's kind of like, oh man, because they, they're wonderful photographers. I'd love to share their talents with everybody. But we have our, I guess, our best Jennifer and Lois here. <laughs> <laughs> and Jenny flies balloons, real balloons. I'm not, not, and I'm going up there soon. That's right. <laughs> So, okay, so let's see who else is on, who's just coming into the stream here. Okay, good. So we got uh, uh, Pat Tillum, welcome. <clears throat> and I see that I miss anybody else here. Okay, they'll, they'll be jumping in. All right, so we'll give it about just three more minutes and then we're gonna go ahead and kind of start the stream. Yeah, yeah, they're starting, yeah, the numbers are jumping up now. A lot of the Photoshop users, user group members will be here as well. It's fun doing these streams on Twitch because you get international audience. So for those who are joining us here, we have, um, this is your Photoshop user group mem uh, meeting. Um, we started here in San Diego, actually. We're, we're actually the largest Photoshop user, user group in the country. And we are officially sanctioned by Adobe as an official Adobe user group. 
So we meet every month uh, right here. Usually the first Saturday of the month, it can you know, change depending on everybody's schedule. But normally the first Saturday of the month, about 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m., a nice full three-hour broadcast. And we've had some fantastic, I know Tony's been one of our presenters, Anthony Washington's mm -hmm. here, a fabulous mm -hmm. uh, concept artist. Um, we have today some, some incredible photographers, um, you know, some of the best in the industry. Um, and they got Kurt Lightfoot, um, it, it, you, you see his name up there. You got John Watts, who was, was on the photo lab. I met him when I was in photography school when I was a kid. We both had hair. Yeah, we had hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both had hair. You, you look at Anthony and it pisses me off. But anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's never, never going to lose that. The way I have mine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Then we let's see what we've got here. We got Lois Lois Fung Sakai. She is the coordinator of the International uh, Photography Exhibition. It's the largest in the country, the largest photography exhibition in the country. Um, let's see, Jenny Wolf, a fabulous photographer, um, and they, they'll, they'll get to talk about themselves. Greg Clamp, digital artist as well as photographer. Um, did I miss anybody? I'm expecting more people, but. I think that's uh, not, I think that's about everybody there. So, all right. So now what we've done, and just to kind of share the format for today, I'm trying to figure out how to work Zoom out here. See, what am I doing? So if I'm talking, I'm just changing up the style here. All right, go. Cool. I know I, I've got, I've got Tony showing full screen. So actually someone else talk. I want to see how, how Zoom is working. Oh, there we go. Kurt's now is coming up because he's made some noise back there. Uh, good, 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 good. I just want to, I just want to organize it so whoever's talking gets to be gets to be maximized because all the Twitch audience is watching and listening to you as well, and they're going to have questions as well. So, so anybody in the audience, if you have any questions, just type it in the chat box. Um, let's see, we've got um, let's go over here. We got IB Wizard is being a smart ass saying Stephen with hair with a question mark. Yes, I had hair at one time. So thank you all for being here on Twitch. Um, that's that audience is going to it's going to grow pretty large today. So today's format um, judges roundtable discussion. Now with the San Diego County Fair has the largest digital arts and photography exhibition in the country. So I'm going to let Lois, who is the coordinator who runs that whole thing, she's going to share with you what it's all about. She's going to share. We're going to talk about the categories you can you can exhibit in. The cost to be a be, to be a part of the fair is nominal. is is very very little. So everybody who's watching today, if you're a photographic enthusiast, you should be submitting your work. Um, and I tell you what, let me, um, Lois, I, I want to go ahead and let you take over from here and, and share everything that's know about the, about the exhibition. Hi, everybody. This is Lois Fong Sakai. I'm the Senior Coordinator of the International Exhibition of Photography. I am going to go ahead and share my screen. We do have a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, so I hope that you can see that. Yes. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. All right. So, Stephen is correct. We are one of the oldest and the largest jury print competitions in the United States, which means that there may be other competitions, but they're all online competitions. They're not print competitions, and they may not actually have a jury. So we have um, typically about 39, 40 judges every year that we use. Um, that kind of goes on a rotating basis depending on who's available and what their specialty disciplines are. The competition did start here in San Diego in the Balboa Park. And if you have been to Balboa Park, next to Spanish Village, there's the Photographic Arts Building. And the Navy actually used to handle um, the photography exhibit in that building since the Navy used to run all of Balboa Park before it became what it is now. So, some people do ask, why are we the International Exhibition of Photography? And because the show started with the Navy and 
a lot of the people that entered were from the military and they were from all over the world. The pictures that were submitted typically were pictures from all over the place. And to this day, it is still an international competition. And we have had entries come in from Europe. We have had entries coming in, not, in addition to the United States, from Central, um, Central America, South America. We actually have, have had people get off the plane from Japan and come in straight to the airport, straight to the photo show for our artist reception and to see the show. So typically we have had about 45, 4,000, 4,500 entries. And last year we had about over 3,100 entries. And our gallery can hang approximately 1,200 images. So more than that, we don't have any more walls and everything ends up looking really, really squished. So we wanna give you the best experience possible. So typically we have 34 categories. This year we added a one year special category. So for those of you that are interested, you know, go ahead and take a screenshot of this, of the description of the categories. Um, we have traditional landscape where we start. And then last year we ended a class five called timeless. Because being here in San Diego and having deserts, we have a lot of places that don't look like a traditional spring, summer, fall and winter. And Timeless has ended up to be one of our most popular categories last year. So there has been a really pent up demand for that. Um, Want to talk about the difference between class eight and nine. People formal means that you as the photographer have control of the situation. You can tell your subjects, the people that you're photographing what to wear. You can pose them, you can bring light in, you can bring reflectors. You can wait for that moment and you have complete control of how you photograph the people. In class nine, people informal means that you have no control whatsoever, except when you click your camera. So it could be travel pictures, it could be street photography. You can't bring in any light for that. So it means that things unfold before your eyes. Um, if you're bringing in pictures of animals, make sure that you're putting them in the right category. I can't tell you the number of times that we have um, things that are, let me see, what's, cons there's some animals that are mammals like orcas <laughs> that tend to be put in incorrect categories. So, Orcas are actually mammals since they're born alive. So just kind of, you know, do a little bit of research to find out whether the, what you're putting in is in the correct category. We had somebody enter a picture of a man one time in mammals. So technically that's not really incorrect, but I don't, and the person may have been trying to say that this man was an animal, but really that person's picture really should be in class eight or nine under formal or informal picture. Um, class 14, it's kind of been a catch all. So it's like insects, reptiles, amphibians, frogs, things like that, crocodiles, but also aquarium sea life where you are not submerged in the water. So we used to have underwater and people would send pictures that were of fish in aquariums and fish tanks and that's a completely different skill set than being underwater. So we started this category probably about 10 years ago, and it's a cell phone category. And typically one of our fan favorites. So any the best camera that you have to take a picture with is the one that you have with you. And pretty much everyone's carrying a cell phone. And I think that when you're printing something for the photo show, it's really difficult sometimes now with the technology that we have in cell phones to tell whether you took it with a cell phone or a much bigger camera. So if you do enter something in cell phone, do let us know um, what type of cell phone you used in the description and if you used any apps to process the picture. But that's really to show that 
photography is accessible to everybody. It's not the fancy camera, it's the your eye and noticing something. Black and white pictures tend to not be entered as often. So if you're looking for a unique um, challenge with fewer entries, I would suggest that you look at entering something in the black and white category. And we have had people enter pictures that were black and white because the color balance didn't work for them. In fact, I remember a few years ago, someone entered a picture, nighttime picture of a square when they were traveling. That picture ended up becoming best in show. And when I asked the photographer why she decided to make it a black and white, she said that there were amber lights in the square. So it made the picture orange. And she had a really difficult time processing it, but she remembered that orange and red can convert to very nice black and white pictures sometimes. So, you know, play around with your pictures. Documentary, kind of think about pictures that would be suitable for a newspaper or National Geographic. So when something is documentary, you tell a story, but you also have to tell your story using whatever is there, which means you cannot move anything. You cannot clone anything out. You cannot add anything. You can dodge and burn to bring out a little bit more detail in specific areas. You can add a vignette if you would so like, but you cannot change the location of the pyramids of your pictures. Um, so we do have the ability to ask for raw images. If the judges think that something might have been changed in the post-processing, but documentary pretty much means that you can only do something typically that you would be able to do in a traditional darkroom. Um, so we have all these other categories in division 1207. They could be color, black and white, um, digital art, digital processing, um, close up, macro, micro means that it could be taken with a microscope or a macro lens, could be details of things, but typically it's things that are larger than actual life. When we're looking at sports, don't look at just traditional, um, you know, baseball, football. Look, consider other sports that we have here. We got a lot of surfing pictures. So think of something that's a little bit more unusual. I think last year we had like um, rodeo pictures, things like that also. So if you go for something unusual, judges tend to really like that. Um, still life. Yes, we are. Absolutely. I just got up to answer Dave Gatley's call. He oh, should okay. be here. So um, sports, do something that's different. For still life, it's going to be things, inanimate objects that you, the maker, have put together um, in an arrangement. And any of these could be color or black and white. Abstract is something that you can't necessarily tell what it is. Underwater, here we have required that the photographer must be submerged in the water. So it could be in the ocean, it could be in the lake, it could be in a swimming pool. Um, but that's really kind of fun for, I think, the photographers to make. Best friend is your pet. So of course we get dogs and cats, but we've also had bulls. We had a snake one time squeezing toothpaste, which was really, really adorable. So if you have an unusual pet, do something fun with it. Tell a story. Um, family moments is something that I love and we tend to not give very, very many entries in that, but it's photographs that tell the story of your family special moment. Um, we've had food fights that people have captured between family members. We had one photo a few years ago where um, a picture was taken of the kids in the back seat and the kids had all fallen asleep and were leaning against each other. 
really adorable pictures. Um, night pictures could be Milky Way, could be after the sun goes down with the moon. It could be um, dark sky pictures of other galaxies and stars. And we tend to not get a lot of those because, um, you know, when we think here of nighttime, a lot of people just kind of gravitate toward Milky Way, but try to do something a little bit different. Um, our fair theme this year is let's go retro. So the fair is going to be decorated with decorations from different um, decades. So from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So each exhibit will have a different theme as far as a decade. So do you have pictures that you can make or maybe that are in your archives that show, show us during our hippie days or disco? Um, were there old pictures that you had taken of demonstrations that say something about the era? Um, and there's no time limit as to when the pictures had to be taken. They could be taken at any time. And I remember a few years ago, I think it was 10 years ago, we had a category and it was about, um, it was kind of themed on the British invasion. And we had like the Beatles were part of the theme exhibit. I can't remember the exact theme, but in the fair theme, somebody had entered pictures of John Lennon. And what happened is the photographer was an aspiring photographer in New York City when John Lennon had visited. And John Lennon saw him holding his camera and took to him and asked him if he would join him for the day. So this young photographer followed John Lennon around New York City for the day and got these phenomenal pictures. And one of them was of John Lennon signing an autograph in a paperback book. The picture won a ribbon and it was titled Paperback Writer. There was another picture that this photographer took and it was John Lennon looking out into the crowd and on his lapel, he had a pin of Elvis Presley. Just amazing pictures that this photographer had never shared with anybody. He had printed the pictures as a young man and left them in his drawer and completely forgot about them. So the pictures do not have to be taken within the last year. They can be taken at any time. Um, so I'm gonna move on here. So film an alternative process. It could be pictures that were taken using um, traditional film or um, so slide film, black and white negative, color negative, could be Polaroid pictures. So, and we also allow photo restoration in this category. If you do photo restoration, please include it as a duplicate so that you have the original picture on the left and then you have your restored picture on the right. Um, digital art. So digital photographic art is gonna be images that you make so you have to have taken all of the original pictures and then you put the pictures together to make a new image. We do require that when you enter in tier one, that you give us a collage where your finished image is larger and all of your thumbnail original source pictures are along the edge as thumbnails. And we do have in our entry materials that the judges have the right to ask for your original um, raw images at any time. Um, large prints is for images that could be of any size, any subject, up to 40 by 40. So our traditional images must be 16 by 20, finished size, ready to hang but these can be up to 40 by 40. And do be mindful that because the images hang on the wall with the use of Velcro only, that weight is something that should be considered. So please don't enter us anything that's more than seven pounds. We prefer something that's lighter, of course. 
if we we have unfortunately had images that people enter that read a lot and i will tell you if a metal print or an acrylic print or a wood print falls off the wall and hits on a concrete floor, I'm sorry, but your image is going to lose. So it will leave a dent or a crack on your image. So please, please, please be mindful. Um, we had somebody that entered an image one time that was glass. Please, 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 I beg of you, do not enter anything that's made of glass because it will hurt. It will <laughs> cut our gloves and we actually had our exhibit workers, our crew, they wore two pairs of gloves and the glass was still cutting through the gloves. So I don't want us to put any of us in danger. And if that glass image were to fall off the wall, I'm sorry, it would definitely get damaged. The other requirement is um, for large, especially for large prints, but for everything across the board, if you do print in metal, please round off all of the edges so that we don't get cut when we're handling the images. Lois, can I ask you a quick question? Is there a That's weight it. limit on 16 by 20 prints? Is it the same weight limit? Yes, but um, don't but don't make anything that heavy because again, okay. it's like we have such a small amount of real estate to, to put the Velcro on the back. And the second question is, do you need rounded corners on acrylics also? Yes, we'd like to have rounded corners on everything. Thank you. So no sharp images or sharp corners. So we don't want you or us to get in, injured. And we had this category, the class 35 a few years ago, and we're bringing it back for this year, one year only. And it's a solar eclipse experience. And the reason we're bringing this category for this year is because within this year, there have or will be two solar eclipses. One, the last one was in October, and that was an annular solar eclipse. The next one is going to be April, April 8th, and that is going to be a total solar eclipse. So if you're interested in entering solar eclipse pictures, they don't have to be taken during this last year. They could be from previous years. This is the year to do so. Now, the pictures do not have to be taken this time, so you can go back in your archives. But take note that the title of this category is Solar Eclipse Experience. So don't take pictures of just the sun and the moon consider taking pictures of the environment. Look at the shadows around you. Look at what's going on around you. Maybe you might want to consider going wider and showing what everything looks like and not just the sun and the moon. So the key word here is experience. So new this year, as I mentioned, the solar eclipse experience, the fair theme changes every year. So let's go like retro, and that can be a lot of fun. Just a reminder that we do require thumbnails for digital photographic art. Um, when you enter for tier one, this is these are the dimensions that the image should be. And absolutely for tier one or, or for what is delivered, no names or watermarks on your entries. And that is because we are a completely blind, um, we have completely blind judging. The judges do not know who the makers are until they're actually on the wall when the gallery opens up. Except for large prints, your ready to hang images must be exactly 16 by 20. We do measure. Um, and please don't argue with me that it's close enough. <laughs> um, float mounts are not allowed because it doesn't give us very much real estate to hang the images on the wall with the Velcro on the back. We do have the weight limit. And we have in the entry materials some new language this year regarding 
what artificial intelligence work is allowed. So if you go to sdfair.com and you go to the photography exhibit, you have our rules. And on page four of our entry materials, we have a new, new section, image processing and use of artificial intelligence rules. All works in their entirety must be created or photographed by the entrant. In tier one submissions, please indicate the location of images and briefly how the image was edited. Moderate use and corrective enhancement tools and techniques that maintain the integrity of the subject matter and specific category are allowed. So allowable techniques include cropping, color and exposure adjustments, sharpening, noise reduction, healing, cloning, removing, liquefying, layer masking, focus stacking, stitch panoramas, HDR, exposure blending, and infrared. So generative, Photoshop's generative fill and expand may be used as a minor corrective tool so the key here is minor corrective tool, similar to healing, cloning, and removing, when not significantly altering the primary photographic content. It may not be used with text and image prompts to add substantive generated content. And prohibited in all categories are stock art, borrowed imagery, or generative AI. And generative AI would include things like mid-journey, stable diffusion, or other text-to-image or image-to-image -image apps. So, I, and for those of you that are wondering, we didn't come up with this language in a vacuum. We actually talked to, actually, a few, quite a few of the judges, including some that are in the room with us right now. Um, Okay, and we and the judges, we do reserve the right to ask for original source files and judges did ask for original source files last year also. And very, very important, when you enter, be sure to start now, don't wait till the last day. And the last day and time to enter your exhibit, your entries is tax day, April 15th, and it's at 8 p.m this year, 8 p.m. So in previous years, it was 11.59. It's earlier this year. So make a note of that, please. So when you're ready to enter, make sure that you do read the instructions carefully. Look at the categories and see whether your pictures fit into the categories. And unfortunately, not every single image is going to be able to fit in our different categories. Um, enter by the deadline, no names and watermarks, and then after you enter, save your email confirmation. If the images advance from tier one to tier two, then we will email you some print delivery instructions. The delivery days are going to be on May 14th and 15th, I believe it is. And you can print and mount your entries. You can have them printed by somebody else. You can have your deliveries, your um, prints shipped to us just so long as we receive them by the, or you can deliver them in person. And Two days after the end of the fair, that's when we're going to be returning your images to you, or you can arrange for us to ship it back to you, but we do require that you prepay the postage to do so. So the judges may have a little bit to add to this, but there's nothing wrong with at, with submitting a cute picture of a family member or from a wonderful memory picture from your vacation. 
but the judges are going to be looking for something that's not that they may not have a personal connection to. They don't have that memory of your vacation or the love that you feel for your sweet little child or a grandchild. So they're going to be only spending a few seconds to look at a picture, especially during tier one, because they're looking at so many pictures. So what they're going to be looking for is whether your picture has a wow factor. Do they know what they're supposed to be looking at? Is it clear based on your composition and what you've given them? Does the lighting work for them? How, how does the exposure and the color tone look? Is the image sharp where it's supposed to be? Is it focused so it's clear what they're supposed to look at? So judges, do you have anything you'd like to add to this? You can unmute your microphones and All right, then we'll move on. Well, I, I, actually, I think they're talking. Z Zoom has this problem that when everybody's microphones are muted, and then when you unmute to talk, it takes a few seconds for it to actually register you. So they're okay. talking, but we're not hearing them. So hey. yeah, now we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we're going to discuss this in more detail after your presentation as far as uh, what judges like and don't like. Plus, we've got a contest too, right? Yeah, you're gonna have a, we're going to have an image review. Right. Got it. Now, that's to say, okay. we'll, we'll do a 15 minute break after the first hour and a half. The second half, we're going to have our judging. Okay. So these are things that the judges tend to kind of um, notice when they're doing tier one image review to decide whether they want something to be received or not as a print. So I'll just, one I want to mention here is that horizontal lines not level. I would say that's, it shouldn't take very long. So if you have Lightroom or Photoshop or any other photo processing, even a cell phone, take a few seconds to make sure that your, your horizon lines are straight. And, so, and, and Lois, we do have a question from uh, the Twitch audience here. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, is from, from IB Wizard, um, is the photography exhibit planning on adding a, gener a generated AI art category? We are not. And the reason is because, well, there's two, two reasons. One is that we're the international exhibition of photography. So with that, it means that all of the images and the portions of the images that are used to make what's in our gallery need to be made with a camera and a lens. The other thing is it's, it has to do with copyright. And as of now, um, anything that is generative AI has not been determined to be copyrightable. And we do require that um, the maker of the image, the photographer own the copyrights to the images. Right. All right. Good question. Thank you. We're actually going to be doing um, a workshop at the fair this year also regarding um, artificial intelligence, what's allowed and what's not, and have a deeper discussion on that. So mm -hmm. um, let me see. John Watts, you're going to be part of that. And Greg, you're going to be part of that too, I think. Or... And I think it, I am as well. And then you, Stephen. Yeah. So um, look for that on the presentation schedule. And the topic will probably come up during the judges roundtable also, which is going to be the first Saturday when the fair opens. So I think there's going to be a couple of times where people can come to learn more about what is allowed and what is not and why. So when you're preparing your images, um, you know, take some time you spend a lot of time making your pictures. Um, you go to the location, you press the shutter, you go home, you sort all your pictures, and then your image is now accepted for delivery. So you have to print the image. So
for all the time that you spent in making a decision as to how to make your picture, take a little bit of time to make sure that your pictures look good when you're printing and that you put your best foot forward, the best image possible. So what I suggest is take your image and print it on small. You can just do four by sixes, make a whole bunch of test images and see how your pictures look on the different types of papers. And my experience is that because looking at a picture on your computer screen, the light is coming from behind, it's, your picture is going to be brighter when you look on it on a computer screen than when you look at reflected light, which is like bouncing from a light source onto your image and then that light coming back to your eye. So print something small, adjust your photo processing, and then print your pictures again small to see if that's an improvement and then make your larger images. And that way you don't waste a lot of money making pictures that you'll have to reprint if you print large all the way. So we do allow many different substrates for your pictures. Just make sure that they can be hung on our display panels. So flat backs are definitely required so that we can put Velcro on the back. Metal prints and anything else must have rounded corners. No float mounts because float mounts are set away from the wall and it gives us this very small area to put Velcro on the back of the pictures. Your, um, as I said earlier, the finished entries ready to hang must be exactly 16 by 20 unless they're the large prints. And then large prints must be larger than 20 by 24 and no more than 40 by 40. Um, as far as presentation, to give us a uniform look, if you decide to go with a map board, um, either actual map board in front of your picture or a virtual map around your picture, they must be black or pure white. So when I say white, I mean paper white, not snow white, which is blue, not ivory, which is yellow. So it must be pure white or black. And please, 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 no colored mats or mount boards, and you can only use one mat. Um, the in your acceptance email, you'll be getting a digital tag. So please print that out and you can put that on the back of your entry. And once again, no names, signatures, or watermarks on your image or on the mat. And unfortunately, last year, we did have to disqualify some images during tier two judges, judging because the maker decided that he was gonna put his name on the front of the image. So, these are the materials that you need to hang your image. Please don't use masking tape or transparent tape because they don't last very well. Um, photo corners can cause your pictures to actually pop out. It's due to the temperature and humidity changes in our gallery. Your photo will expand and contract. And if you put a photo into a mount using photo corners, when your photo expands and the photo corners don't move, your picture is going to expand and it'll cause that front map to pop off. Um, and we do end up having to repair our pictures all the time. We end up taking pictures off the wall because um, the mounting wasn't done properly. If you do mount pictures on a board, we suggest that you have it done professionally because gray glue can cause bubbles when your pictures are um, mounted on a board and you're using the spray glue. And when your picture expands and contracts, you will get bu those bubbles and it will not look good. You may want to take a picture of this or screenshot of it. So this is how we suggest that you mount your picture. And when I say tape here, I suggest that you use like a linen tape or an artist tape because that happens to be thinner tape. Lois? Yes. 
can you uh, explain that certain printers, myself, Chrome, uh, so on and so forth, can print it with a digital map also? Please? Yes. Um, we did. I did say that earlier. So you yeah, can I'm sorry. An I'm actual map, or you can have a printed digital map around red, your red solo cup in honor of Toby Keith. Here's to you. And um, it's really up to you. It's your choice as to whether you want to have a mat on top of it or a printed mat. Although I, my, I would think just kind of me personally that having an actual front mat on top of it might provide a little bit extra protection because we do stack the images on top of each other in the boxes. Even we do use um, slip sheets between every picture, but I think that it might provide a little bit of extra protection. An actual mat looks better than a digital key line as well to, at least to me as a judge, um, a professional matting job versus a, a digital line is um, it is more protected and it does look more professional. Okay. In most cases. All right. So this these are the instructions that go with the previous picture as to how to do the entry, how to prepare the image. I kind of have to disagree with what Greg said uh, j said just a little bit. In addition to the protection. I Read it out. If you look at those that ended up winning first place, that went into the best of show, more than half of those were not with physical mats. So I, I'm not sure I totally agree with that statement. Uh, I I understand why you say it, but you know. well, but the, but weren't a lot of those edge to edge? Actually, there were only four of the 34 that were full bleed. Everything else had digital mat. Oh, they had a mat, whether it was digital or physical. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. So as you can agree see, disagree. we have disagreements all the time. Yeah. It depends on the image like, and it depends on I'm all, how the, the line is done. And... All right, judges. <laughs> all right. So it's really important that you put your image on the backboard rather than on the front mat. So in the picture on the right here, you can see that the entrant put the print and attached it to the front mat. And when the double stick tape that was attached um, to the backboard did not hold, it took the artwork onto the floor with it. Um, the picture on the left, the maker used um, masking tape, which actually doesn't hold very well. Please, please, please use a sharp blade to cut your mats. So you take so much time to make your image and to print it. Presentation does matter. And the judges do not like it when images are, are prepared using a hacksaw to cut the mats. Here we have the same thing where the mat was not cut straight and also the, the minding board was showing around the mat. So, so a few problems here. Um, the image was not square on the mount board. It set lower on the right hand side than on the left. And not necessarily that the print would be kicked out of the show if there's no face mat but the judges did note that there was no face mat on it. It was mounted just to a poster board on the back. So in instance, I have seen instances where over the years where somebody um, just stuck a picture on the backboard with no face mat. And while the image might be accepted into the show, the judges might not be as likely to give it a ribbon. Um, this image had two mats, and the mat that's white is not plain white also. Just kind of a note here also, um, the white mat that's used here, if it were plain white, that would be fine. But as beautiful as this mat is, 
this mat would probably weigh a lot more than other mats. And so that means that you would need a lot more um, double stick tape to be able to fold that front mat on. So just kind of keep that in mind. So the print was not square here and there was also a knife slip on the bottom edge when they cut the mat. Oh, this one. Apparently when the picture was delivered, it was dropped on the floor and somebody stepped on the mat and the judges could see the waffle pattern from the bottom of the shoe on the mat. Here's where those photo corners were used and it forced the front, the picture um, when it expanded and popped off the front mat. And there was actually not very much double stick tape there holding it together either. So the presentation fell apart there. This one, some the person or somebody had dropped it before it made it to our gallery and it dented the corner. There are bubbles in the double stick tape here and not very much of it. And so the front mat popped off. Oh, this one. <laughs> Couple problems here. The person printed it, I think it was on acrylic, and they, it was a smaller size. So what they did is they made up a float mount, and then they double stuck tape the float mount on the back of it. So before it even came to judging, the whole thing fell apart because Double stick tape won't hold up the weight of all of everything that's there. And incidentally, we do not allow float mounts this anymore. So something like this would not work anymore. So this is a behind the scenes look of what it looks like during tier one judging. Um, the judges work in teams of three. I think I see gray clamped there. Uh, Kurt Lightfoot, I think that might be you. We've got Stephen Burns on that team on the left. So each team of judges will be given a certain number of pictures to look at, and they give a thumbs up or thumbs down as to whether they would like to see that image delivered for tier two judging. So We'll get more into that when the judges are going to be reviewing pictures shortly as to what they're looking for. And that is the digital file that they're looking at. And I think this was where there was a picture that the judges in front looked at and they weren't sure whether it was AI generated or whether it was actually made. And so they pulled in judges from another team to review. And this can happen also if you enter a photo in the wrong category and the judges would like to see whether the judges in a different category might be willing to accept it. This is what the photo gallery looks like when we receive it. And all those things in those yellow boxes are what it takes to build the, the photo show. For those of you that have entered before, this is what it's like when you deliver your images. So we have little templates on the tables that are 16 by 20. We measure to make sure that the pictures are 16 by 20. We make sure that the labels are on the back of the pictures, that everything's flat on the back. And then we adhere all of the entry labels. And then the judges come in for tier two judging where we have volunteers that are holding up the images and they bring the images closer or further away to the judges. They tilt them when, if there's any reflections. They put the pictures into piles and then they negotiate with each other as they are doing on the right here to decide what which pictures get first, second, third, and fourth place in any honorable mentions. And these are all of the first place winners of each of the categories. And the judges each get a card. They run it around the table. They look at the images. And 
They put a card down to indicate which picture they think is most deserving of being the best in the show. So in the last 12, 13 years that I've been at the fair, I've seen the best in show pictures be selected from three votes all the way up to 13 votes. We had one year where the best in show won by one vote. And interestingly enough, the runner up for the best in show, and we don't announce that who those pictures are to the public, the runner up that year for best in show actually ended up winning the People's Choice Award. So these are our judges from the last couple of years and included our, our student volunteers with our judges. And then after that, we start building the shelves. We stick Velcro on the back of every single image. We put all of the pictures on the wall. So these are the critical dates for this year. So you may want to take a picture of this, take a screenshot of it. And then the night of the artist reception is going to be June 11th this year, which is going to be the night before the fair opens. So it's our sneak peek. And we have workshops. We have, I would say, the most access to our judges and our speakers of any photo show anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we've got the judges roundtable, which is the first Saturday. And then the next Saturday is judges critique. And just something to add about that. We have had um, a woman when I first started at the fair, she entered 10 pictures into the photo show. And none of the images that she entered were selected to be delivered. So she went to the judges critique, got feedback from the judges. She made edits to the pictures, reprinted them. And the next year she entered all 10 of the same images again. All of her images this next year were accepted into the photo show and several of them won ribbons. So you can get a lot of valuable information and all it costs you is the ticket to enter the fair. So every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, except for the very last day of the fair, we're gonna be having free workshops. And I think a lot of the judges here are gonna be doing workshops also. We've got two photo shootouts, a photo shootout up to 30 people for each day. So make sure if you're interested that you enter early. Um, we have tips from photographers. And once we know who has done really well, we'll invite a few people that have entered with various levels of experience and um, to come and talk about what they photograph, what they carry, what their process is. And then we'll do a walkabout through the gallery also. And then the dates of all of the workshops. So we are actually looking for some photo crew members this year also. So if you're not gonna enter this year and you wouldn't mind making a little bit of extra money and being able to play at the fair and see the best 1200 pictures that are entered at the fair Consider joining us. We're looking for five people to join our photo crew. And um, so you cannot enter. And we're also looking for a few volunteers that might be interested in helping us um, during intake. If you do want to be a volunteer or photo crew, you cannot enter. So that would be a conflict of interest. Um, but let us know, contact me for Steven, and then he can get you in touch with me so we can talk about that. We're going to be posting a job opening to be a photo crew member, photo exhibit worker, um, probably in the next week or so. And 
And these are our QR codes. If you want to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, we're actually more, um, we post more on the photo show one, the Facebook one. And you guys ready to look at the images of the winners from previous years? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'll go into the next one. And I do apologize. I unfortunately, I don't think I can provide sound here. I'll turn up my speaker as much as I can, but I can't guarantee it. All right, guys. All right, that's all, folks. Oh, that's wonderful. So this is exciting. Um, it the largest photography, you know, you know, curated exhibition in the country, um, and the and the fees to enter is is so inexpensive. There's no excuse for for you know you having photographers photographers out there not uh, getting involved. Um, so what we're going to do? Did you have anything? Anybody else? Wanna, go ahead. Let me just interject here. So it's twenty dollars per entry. You can submit up to twenty images <coughs> per individual. And just to kind of put in context, the very first um, international exhibition in photography, the entry fee was two dollars. Wow. So I remember Jean a few years had done a cost of cost of living index escalation and he said that twenty dollars was a was a deal because it should have been like forty or fifty dollars per picture when you escalate it over all the years <laughs> absolutely so if the audience out audience and twitch you guys have any questions to type it into the chat box now um and we'll get a little interaction going with uh, with lois but in the meantime i think we, it's a good idea we do like a 15 minute break um, and then we'll come back and we're and Lois is going to lead us into introducing us to the judges and the judges is going to give their input and insight and their wisdom in terms of uh, you know how to be um, you know how to present your work professionally um, you know for for exhibition in a context contest like this. So I'm not seeing any questions 
in the chat here. And how about if we all we go go for a fifteen minute break? I'm going to put the fifteen minute timer straight on up. So for those those of you who are watching me on Twitch, I'm gonna I'm going to share my I am sharing my screen. I'm going to put it right on top of everything, and then we're going to have the timer go. All right. So okay. So let's let's take a fifteen minute break. I'm going to start the timer now, and we'll come back and hear from the judges directly. Thank you, Lois. You're wonderful. All right, we'll You're come. Welcome. All right, we'll come back for team.
that is the annoying timer that you see here going off there. And the strange thing is that I've actually turned off the sound on this stupid thing. I'm still trying to figure out how to turn off the sound on this thing. See, the sound is off, but it's still going. Really strange. We got two minutes. Wild. That is really weird. Even with the sound off and the timer, it takes over your machine. Clever, these programmers. <laughs> All right, I guess we had like one minute left anyway. I got to go and make my smoothie nice and healthy. I got to go and get my cup of water nice and healthy. <laughs> I got an egg in here, I got spinach, I got acai juice and all fresh frozen vegetable fruit and vegetables. I have chlorine. Uh, God only knows what else is in this one. Right. Yeah, I know it shows. <laughs> Don't do well, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I do remember when we both had hair. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I was a little kid in photo school at Palomar College. And that was before Donna Cosentino was an instructor there. Wow. In fact, Donna Cosentino came. Well, for those for the for those of you online who don't know Donna Cosentino, she was one of the uh, one of the original coordinators for the International Photography Exhibition, and she came to teach at Palomar College in San Marcos, San Diego, the year that I was I was graduating. I I, re I received my photo certificate, so I took I took the the photography. History of Photography class from Donna, um, which I was hoping to take it for another instructor. Um, oh, what is his name? I'll, I'll remember his name in a little bit, but the, the other instructor left left the college, but I ended up taking it from Donna. Uh, she was the one who got me involved in the judging. Yeah. Uh, she, when she was coordinator, then you became the coordinator right after that. Right. I, I She was the one that got me to doing presentations I was the first presenter, like like the presentations and the workshops that uh, um, that Lois is doing now. I was the one that started all that. Um, well, she started with me doing it, and then when I took over, I brought in a bunch of other artists in to to start doing workshops. That's kind of that's where it happened, basically. Um, and I'm so glad that uh, the, the the current coordinators are are continuing that. I think it's a great education for the public. Um, Okay, um, so let's let's. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let Lois introduce you, um, and kind of, kind of get you all going. This, this is the most interesting part um, because you guys get to you guys get to hear from the judges themselves, and I and I'm really honored to be a part of this group of judges here because they they really are top notch um, in the industry. Um, and, uh, and 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 good people, and they're willing to share, which was which was which was great about all of them. They're very open, but extremely talented in what they do. I mean, John Watts and I, you just heard him, he and I talking. He he owned a lab called Watts uh, Watts Color Lab, and I liked his work better than Chrome. Chrome was a, was was also a very popular color lab in, in San Diego. I I was a photographer during the time digital didn't exist. I was, it was back in the film days where where you really had to know your stuff. You can't screw around um, because if you screwed around and something gets destroyed or or, or the, the, something didn't come out right in terms of your your product, um, no one hires you again. So you 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 really did have to know your stuff. And then nowadays we're living in a world where it's all digital now. We can. I mean, I'm sorry. When I was doing photography. I used a four by five camera. That's the little bellows camera, the sheet on your head, because that is what the commercial industry wanted. They wanted four by five transparencies. If I went into a, a uh, um, an advertising studio um, to show my portfolio, you mounted four by five transparencies 
in a in a 11 by 17 black like a four ply black um mount board and you and, and the and the client will hold the transparencies up to the light the sunlight or whatever light they had in there and look at your work so um so we didn't have led screens so we had polaroids so i had a special gadget that attached to my four by five camera and I would pre-expose or I'll expose the shot to make sure that the exposure is correct, making sure the lighting is correct, the composition's correct, everything had to be correct, right? Nowadays, people aren't thinking that way. Um, all of us, I think here as judges come from that background. We went to school for photography. We were in the classroom with other students where we got feedback from the students. Whenever, whenever we in the darkroom working on our piece to, uh, the, the, to submit for an assignment, we had to take our stuff from the darkroom, show the instructor. The instructor will look at the work and say, okay, do this, 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 dodge here, burn here. Uh, I don't know how many people actually know these terms because a lot of young people don't, know, don't even know what burning and dodging is right now. But, but uh, you know, lighten here, brighten here. Um, this is too flat. You need to pop up the contrast. And it's all done in chemistry. So um, it's it's a different world now. Now a lot of the learning is being done on YouTube, is being done on Facebook, is being done virtually. It's a different world now. So there's some advantages, and then there's some disadvantages. Um, so I guess my point is that is that the judges here had that wonderful opportunity of being able to be in the classroom where they get to learn from the students and the instructors. Um, and and it's, a, it's a different environment. As I, think, I think it's a little bit better learning experience, but you know, we have to learn to make the virtual uh, um, interaction just as educational. So Lois, I'll stop talking and I'll let you share. <laughs> No, you won't. <laughs> but if Lois is going to talk, trust me, I stop talking. I'm just, just going to talk really briefly about each of the judges. So right. John Moss, wave at everybody. So John is known for being one of the premier um, Photoshop processing and printing people here in San Diego. So if you are needing some help with the processing and or printing of your images, he's your guy. So he owns Watts Digital. And um, he's been a judge since before I joined the fair. So not to say he's older, he just started when he was younger. No, he's older. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move on to Anthony Washington. He's been a longtime um, friend of Stephen Burns and I have interacted with him a few times over the years. And he is one of our renowned um, digital artists. And he knows a lot about compositing but he also has a background in um, photography and understands photography also. Um, Greg Clamp, another one of our digital artists. And he's been, he actually started judging for us at the fair before as a very young man also. <laughs> um, Jenny Wolf, she is photographer extraordinaire, does a lot of wildlife pictures, um, nature, has some amazing shots. Also a hot air balloon owner and enthusiast. But if you're looking for really? it, he's your gal right now also. And she is one of the people that runs North County Photographic Club. And you guys have, oh, when are you meeting, Jenny? Uh, we meet the fourth Wednesday of every month. Um, currently, we're meeting at the Dove Library in Carlsbad. Um, and so we have a different speaker every month. Uh, Lois will be there this coming February. Um, and, uh, you can come by to, uh, your first meeting for free. If you want to just come and visit and see what we're all about. Um, and I also want to give a plug for chicks talking pics. Sandy and I do a, a, a uh, um, YouTube, uh, critique session. It's great. Every other week. So. Okay. And then Kurt Lightfoot, photographer extraordinaire also, and also digital artist and has a great background in compositing also. And um, yeah, you, Kurt, I think you started at the fair before you grew a mustache. <laughs> Maybe. I before was... I grew a beard, I think it was correct. 
All right. And everybody already knows Stephen Burns. So I'll leave it up to you now, Stephen. And then if, if you're when you're ready to start the image review. Um, yeah, well, I, I want I want the judges to talk about um, what what the, really what they're looking for in the award winning image, or 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 not, maybe graduate to what we're looking for in an award winning image, and talk about what we're looking for in terms of an image that's just going to hang on a wall. Uh, and actually, Lois, well, would you share with everybody how 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 many images we actually get submitted, and how many images we actually hang? So the most that we, we've ever got is about 4,500 images that were entered. We have room to put, to share about 1,200, 1,100 to 1,200 in the gallery. Okay. So now the audience now understands the competition they're up against. So so well, a lot of people seem to think that it's not a big deal unless their photograph wins a ribbon. But let me tell you, just to be accepted mm -hmm. in the photo means that you're in the top. 20, 25% of all of the images that have been entered. So the goal really should be to get into the show because that's saying something already. And how the ribbons are given, I mean, just my observation is it depends on who your team of judges is on any particular day. It may be depending on how they feel that day also. So not that you guys would do this, but I have been on judging teams where I've seen people say, oh, that's a picture of a cat. I love cats. I get a blue ribbon. <laughs> and that person might also say, oh, I got bit by the dog last night. So I'm not going to give any ribbons to anything with a dog. <laughs> OK. They, they so, got quiet. Got, yeah. <laughs> I like dogs. <laughs> dogs love me. <laughs> So, all right. So, the judges. I'm 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 gonna throw it out to anybody and everybody. Um, let's see. Anthony's our newest judge. Um, and welcome yeah. aboard, Anthony. Anthony's Anthony's been winning awards every year. <laughs> I, I think I think he's gonna hate being a judge with us this year because he ain't gonna get oh, any no. money. <laughs> <laughs> right. He only gets no, money if you win the awards. <laughs> I appreciate the, the the opportunity and the honor to be amongst all the judges um, and you know, do my first year. So I'm, I'm very excited uh, about that next process. Um, you know, but I, I went to uh, judges critiques before I even entered. Um, so I definitely uh, I learned a lot about submitting art and, and didn't know because I was you know I have a variety of styles that I do in, in entertainment art, but um, doing the critiques I was able to zero in on exactly what judges were, were looking at when I was submitting my work. Because I, I know I had submitted before and it didn't get in, so I was like, I need to figure out what I need to do to get my work stronger for the next year. Uh, and that's when I started, um, you know, painfully winning some awards and and uh, and and getting getting more and more work accepted. So um, those critiques do work. So anybody who um, is able to get to them, that would please please do that because it helps a lot. Um, but no, I'm very excited. I mean, I, I want to learn um, with with the the team that I'm on uh, this year and. And, um, you know, but I have a, a definitely a, a, an eye for what I like. Um, it's, and it came a lot from the critiques as well because it helped me zero in on composition and how I balance color and um, you know, especially the, the, the pixel issue. I, I want to make sure it's, my resolution is really sharp. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but overall, no, I, I definitely, I'm just very excited to, uh, to be a judge. And, and um, but that's some of the stuff I've learned from, from those critiques in, in the past. So I, I know I'll be using that in, in judging this year. All right. Well, welcome aboard. So, um, all right. I'm, I'm, I guess I want to throw it out there for for anybody to take this. You know, share share with the audience what we go through as judges, what we're looking for. Um, just just we'll do basics, and then we can we can because we we're living in this world now where everybody's got a camera, and we have multi and we have the. Uh, uh, We've got Facebook and we've got, you know, 10,000 friends telling us we're great at something, but there's a reason why we're a judge, right? You know, it's, is, is that there, there are, there are rules to art. Even though we break those rules, we break those rules trying to honor the rules. We break them in the way that honors the rules. Maybe we can talk about that. Talk about what we're looking for compositionally, 
the wow factor? What is the wow factor? Um, how many images are we looking at every before we before we decide that this one is something different? So Kurt, you want to take and start with it? Yeah, sure. I'd be glad to. I think um, one of the most important things that we respond to in a photograph is is it interesting? Is it um, unique? And does it have a unique narrative story? And it has to be very well presented in order for that story to come across uh, to the judges and then to the viewers at the show. So if it's interesting to you, that's a good start. Mm -hmm. And then you want to ask yourself the question, is it going to be interested, interesting to a total stranger or the people you now see on the screen as an example? So you want that combination that you love it. You love the child that's in the photograph that Phyllis brought up earlier, but also, as a, a child involved in something that is a, a broader narrative that has a more general appeal. And then it has to be extremely well presented. It has to be uh, clear, crisp. You have to be doing editing that controls the viewer's eye flow through the image. And the image will be stronger for all of that. And um, that works with the, with the judges. Uh, Lewis showed a lot of photographs where judges are working together so you're not dealing with just one person reacting right. because these judges are discussing it with each other about what's powerful about this image. Uh, so that's an example of, is this image interesting to another person? Right, and then this, and then, and even in that judging between, we get three judges per category. And even in making that decision, the judges can disagree and, and argue and bicker and, and sometimes- no. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, we we got these differences of opinions that we've got to kind of we got to work it out and say, hey, you know what what's going to happen with this image? You know, does it stay or does it go or does it get first place or does it get third place? Um, Lois was absolutely right. If you're getting on the wall, you're doing really good. Trust me, you're doing really really good. Um, someone else, no share. We got Jenny. Jenny, you want to share next? Um, I think a lot of things, we see a lot of the same images, especially if they're, you know, iconic San Diego sorts of images. So you want to make sure that you have something that's unique, that's going to really grab attention. Because when we're doing the first round of judging, we're just looking at a computer screen and we're looking at hundreds of images and we're kind of going fast sometimes. And so you need something that's going to stop the judges and say, hey, I want to look at this a little bit longer. Right. Hey, hey Greg, do you have any any comments on this? Um, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, it. when we're doing our, our tier one judging, we're looking at a s small thumbnail on the screen at first. And sometimes we can tell photos that are really not very good, even at that level. So think of uh, if, if a couple of people have mentioned composition and technical uh, expertise and presentation and you have to think about presentation at that level right. a small thumbnail also when it's blown up also when it's presented on paper on the wall uh, or on whatever your substrate is and so you you're always thinking about the subject matter the composition what you put into it to tell some kind of news story if you're going to shoot places that everybody else shoots you've got to do something different with it to get our attention because we have probably shot it or we've seen dozens of similar shots and if even if you shoot a really good version of Antelope Canyon or something, and and you know I, I I've seen so many, and very few are as good as the first one that I saw thirty years ago. And so if you're 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 competing with history and the history in the minds of the judges who are looking at hundreds of photos every year, and so you you have to think that out in terms of um really getting through that you know all the noise that's out there and all the noise that's within your own image to to do something that really peaks out uh you know stands out against all the rest of that crowd 
So you're looking at the, the subject matter, the composition, the, right. the mood of it, the story that you're telling, the simplicity with which you present it, the technical acuity, um, understanding your materials and your tools, and then how it, you know, what, where it's going to be and everything, every single pixel of that matters. Um, and, you know, sometimes we get images that are really not technically that good, but the story is so impactful, it over it overflows all that other stuff. But if you're, if you're, you know, you get comparing an apple and an orange and, or, you know, you're comparing these photos, uh, you, you really want all those things to be as high, as masterful as possible. All right. Anybody else want to make a comment on, on Actually, what? Actually, I just want to reiterate what everybody's already said uh, and, and to emphasize the word uniqueness because you're, Lois showed, uh, mentioned the numbers earlier and uh, only one out of three or one out of four advance. Right. And those ones that advance have a unique, how many pictures of we as judges and, and Greg talked about this, right. of Antelope Canyon, the, uh, 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 um, of the pier. The, yeah. That stupid bridge that goes to Coronado, okay? right. but, you know, that kind of thing. We see it's got to be unique. How does it make it unique? Well, uh, change your vantage point. Uh, there's lots of different ways. I'm not going to get into that here. One thing I did want to mention, though, and Jenny brought this up, uh, was familiar images. Um, I did, judged for con uh, two years ago. I judged mammals. And I, no offense, but I saw so many brown bear pictures, it wasn't even funny. Not that there was anything wrong with it, but at that point, I'm now judging, and so are the other judges more than likely, judging against the other brown bear images that are in there. And something else I should mention, too, is that, and Jenny touched on this, she's heavily involved in the North County Photographic Society. If you're not sure of your image and you want to find out, don't tell, uh, ask your aunt, your aunt Mabel. She's going to love it regardless, okay? Uh, ask people that have that experience. Go to, and join a camera club. Ask other photographers. There's an incredible amount of experience at these camera clubs. Incredible amount of experience. North China Photographic Society is yeah. one of the best. And I mean, there's Fallbrook Camera Club, any of the clubs associated with Southern California Association of Camera All Clubs. Right. If you're not in San Diego County or in yeah. Southern California, find an excellent camera club in your area spend time with it you don't necessarily have to be, a lot of these camera clubs are virtual i think uh yeah. jenny isn't the uh uh North county photographic society meetings are I, they also I think, virtual i think there's still no we person. switched to in person this year right okay okay because their strength their strength is really in person they want to be there and see the photograph okay. yeah well, that makes sense yeah but i mean I, my point is is that number one everyone's mentioned the word unique make it unique mm -hmm. it's a contest we have 30 seconds or less in tier one to look at an image and decide if we want to keep it or not. That's it. So, you know, first impressions, et cetera, et cetera. That's it. I also want to add, don't enter a lot of the same image in the same category because you compete against yourself. <laughs> we'll start putting those images together and say, well, which one of these three or four images is similar do we like best? I want to piggyback onto that. I totally agree with that. And a few years ago, there was somebody that entered this amazing picture of a hummingbird going into a flower. It had a beautiful um, modeled background. And the judges just thought it was really, really amazing. It had beautiful catch lights and the hummingbird's eyes and everything. Only problem was that photographer entered like five pictures that were similar. <laughs> either with different birds and different flowers and after about the you know second one after the third one and the fourth one they go well we can't have all of these pictures in it so they started having to figure out which ones of them they actually wanted to hang in the show they were all in great pictures in their own right but that photographer by entering all the pictures in the same category in the same year ended up competing against herself um i'd like to kind of move on from that one thing I didn't mention in my presentation, but I know that the judges tend to kind of notice also, is that when people are in Lightroom or Photoshop or others um, type of software, sometimes there's photographers that will over-process their pictures. 
Mm -hmm. They will over sharpen pictures. They're over saturate pictures. And I just want to remind you guys, the sliders go both ways. So just because you can go to 100% doesn't mean that <laughs> good. And, um, you know, Stephen, you teach classes with the Photoshop users group online. I know, John, you're just starting a, a, a Photoshop class uh, 101. You just oh, only for the last three years. Right, but you're starting it again from the very first. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. And the course, and the course all, times a year. And of course, all the students so, who take my Photoshop classes always hang. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of resources to kind of... Um, where you can learn how to process your pictures and not overdo it. Mm -hmm. So uh, by taking classes with Steven through this group, the Photoshop users group, and then also with John Watts, if you ping him and find out how you can get in on his free classes, guys, right, John? My favorite four letter F word is free. <laughs> so, you know, get some additional insight from someone <laughs> that's not your Aunt Mabel. So this that is actually Lois, thank you, because this, this really segues to what are the most common mistakes that you guys see entrance making? I'd like to comment on that. Okay. <laughs> well, one, one of the terms we hear in judging a lot is border control. So I'm sure that everyone will have a, a comment on this. If you've got something going on in the border of your image. That draws the eye away from the subject. Well, that's a huge no-no. That's uh, you're not making your image easy to read for the viewer. It affects the narrative. It's a distraction, and um, it's something that we want you to recognize on your own and to eliminate that distraction at the edges. And it's a very common term inside the judging group is this border control concept. So maybe somebody else can comment on that. Oh, I think composition and cropping are, are, are absolutely critical. If you don't crop or compose it properly, that Kurt pointed it out, border control. I mean, hey, here's a nice picture of, of a tree, but you've got this other tree in it, which isn't part of the subject matter, but you want to keep it in because it's got yellow leaves. Well, it's not important to the story. It, it, in some cases, could be important to well, capture somewhere in there. But, yeah, John's right, really. The, the first thing is get, getting the composition down uh, so that it's really focused on the thing itself, the most important thing that you want people to experience. And then the, those distractions, like Kurt was talking about, that's what, what my eye goes to first right. is the distractions. Right. I, the, the noise at the edges is is probably the most prominent, but you can have noise throughout. Just things that don't belong there, they, they don't they take away from what you should be looking at. And so going through and cleaning that stuff up so that uh, it's like I, I use this analogy a lot thinking about music. You, know, you can go out and record a field recording of sound out there, but if you're picking up all of that background noise, uh, the cars going by or sirens off in the distance or kids chattering, you're not going to have a good recording. Right. And you can't make an album out of that unless, you know, it, unless it's really clean quality. Or your Pink Floyd. Or, well, it, it, it can be intentional. Noise, noise, you know, patterns and rhythms and, and noisy things can be really beautiful. But it, it has to be intentional. It has to come across and make the thing stronger, not take away from the main subject. I would say composition or not cropping properly is probably the number one reason images get uh, rejected in tier one, to be honest with you. Okay. And print quality? <laughs> you want to talk about that, John? Because you're the printer here. Uh, good print quality. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> oh, your, 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 your microphone went out, John. Hello. Can there we go. Me? Now we can. Yes. Was, uh, <laughs> sorry, I was had you know uh what we're talking print quality. Uh print quality is uh equals proper input and a good printer, okay. But there's a lot of good printers out there, Chrome, uh North County Photo, Bay Photo, so on and so forth. But if you send them a crappy file, you're gonna get a crappy print. And if you don't know how. Stephen can help you. I can help you. I'm sure there's lots of resources out there that can help you. 
properly post-process your image for a photographer. Okay. And run test prints. Your, your screen and your print are going to be different. And if you're sending it to a lab and relying on them to produce the image, you definitely need to do some test prints at home first because the lab isn't going to know what problem you're trying to solve in the printing process. Mm -hmm. So since the print is different than the screen, you, you will need to print and then make some adjustments for that print. And then you have the best chance of a lab producing the result that you want. So basically learning how to profile their system to their lab Proper color management, yeah. Yeah. John, can yes. you talk about the importance of calibrating your computer monitor? And I think that was something that I need both to talk about, but can you mention what it is that we calibrate our computers for during tier one judges? Technically, the uh, specifications for calibrating and profiling your monitor are 6,000 degrees Kelvin, 110 lumens, and 2.2 .2 gamma. And that's pretty much universally accepted uh, all across the spectrum as the de rigueur, if you will, of, of what it is you need to get good output. But it's right. And, and, and I also say that 90% of the people out there, maybe that's a high uh, figure, but most people out there are not calibrating their monitors. It should be. It, and it does involve a cost. And uh, uh, it no. Nope. We, we, lost your, we lost your mic again, John. Hello. Oh, there it is. It's, it's disconnecting. <laughs> I think I'm going to put my pack closer. I'm wireless. That might be good. You move around yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, what would they say? I, yeah, if you don't have the software and hardware uh, borrowed from a friend, again, there's another reason to join uh, the camera clubs. It's perfectly legal to borrow the hardware and load the software on your computer and calibrate and profile your monitor, even if you didn't purchase it. Um, it typically runs about $250 for the monitor calibration device. Um, rather than waste everybody's time here, I've got posts on my blog and or you can email me and I can tell you more about it. But that, yeah, Kurt's right. Uh, that having your monitor looking as close to your printer is critical. It is never going to be an exact match, and which is why he mentioned test prints and or eliminating as many uh, uh, variables as you can. Um, John, do me a favor and type in the address to your blog into the chat box in Zoom, and I'll send it out, and, I'll, and I will put it in the Twitch chat box for the users. Okay, now I think I'm an idiot. Where is it? I chat, look at the bottom of your screen. It should see a, ah. a chat symbol. Yeah, just click on it. And okay, it'll grab what did you want me to put in there? Um, the, the, the link to your blog. Oh, okay. Because you mentioned your blog. All right, give me a second. And, and here's the ah, monitor. Yes. This is pretty common. Yes. There we go. Um, it's a spider, and it's a pretty common and not all that expensive um, instrument for measuring your screens. And I have two screens. You can see them behind my head in the uh, Zoom here. The one on the uh, portable computer is not adequate for editing, as I'm sure that uh, Stephen Burns will come. <laughs> but the larger screen is behind my head right now is uh, is a much better screen, and I calibrate both. Uh, and you can sometimes you can compare the two. And a lot of times, when people look at an image, they're looking at an image that's of the quality of that small screen, not the quality of the large screen. So right. you might want to know what the differences in those two qualities are. And uh, from that information, I print. Mm -hmm. uh, you want uh, to understand printer profiles, and that the printer profile that you're using matches the paper that you're using. Because it's phenomenal how different paper can be and the profiles can be. Uh, and getting the right result requires using the, the right profile. And you can only and get that, you, you can only get that profile from the printer, right? Right. right. Or I can create you one. Well, that that's a, if they're working with the printer, I think they would have to talk to the printer for that, right? Uh, if you need them, I would say ninety nine percent of the time, if it's a good printer like the ones I've already mentioned. Uh, profiling using the profile from the printer is not as critical as having your monitor calibrated. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of times, using the soft proofing feature in a uh, a program is what, by loading that profile and soft proofing, it will give you what you're theoretically. And I want to quote, uh, uh, emphasize theoretically what your image should look like, but 
again, like Kurt said, I think a lot of times if you have those questions, uh, like Lois said too, don't wait to the last minute. Uh, send uh, to Bay Photo or me or, or any of those places if you want. Have a test print made. You know, it doesn't need to be big, five by seven, eight by ten, and uh, you can go from there. And so I ordered test prints from labs before I ordered the final larger print, just to see how it was going to look. Sometimes it can be really touchy. And we have been known, my husband and I have been known to take one image and send it out for to be printed on like 10 different papers, just to kind of see how they look before we decide what to print big on the final paper. Uh, Stephen, that link that I sent you is actually, it says, uh, Calibrate profile monitor with the X right. I want to display pro, but it, it will work equally well with what uh, Kurt showed you the data vision on um, color vision product, the, the spider. Uh, there are really only two main monitor profiling packages out there that are worth a, a, a hoot. One is uh, the X right uh, platform, and the other is the, the uh, spider platform. And for those that know, uh, don't know, X right for some silly reason, decided to change their name or rebrand themselves as Calibrite, C-A-L-I-B-R-I-T-E. And it's it's the same stuff as the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. If you want to buy one, uh, I, I would suggest uh, that you try uh, finding them on eBay or Amazon as the X-Rite product. Uh, it, 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 either product works, but they did rebrand themselves about a year or so ago. Calibrite, huh? Okay. Yeah. And it does, by the way, it does use different software, which uh, it costs an extra. I know, don't don't be careful, but it costs an extra ten dollars for their new software if you're using their old, uh, the old product. Huh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you guys mentioned that what the one of the things that you guys feel that the entrance should do is make sure their images are properly cropped, and I just wanted to mention this to the users that um, don't use cropping as a as a common go-to to create your imagery try to do it mostly in the camera try to try to utilize those the the megapixels all those megapixels on your sensor to record the detail for your vision um, crop is if necessary but 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 don't rely on it so much uh, no, I remember in, in photography school, full frame printing and full frame uh, photography was kind of a thing where, you know, you, you're always challenging yourself to compose everything within the full frame of the of, 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 of the of the shot. But uh, I think it's more important, especially with digital. Um, well, that also brings up another point, and that's that when you are having your prints made, if you advance to tier two or mm -hmm. even for the tier one, yeah. you're not locked into a fixed 16 by 24 to 5 ratio. You, you can make your image whatever works for the subject matter. So if it works out that it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, 8 by 17 to make your image right, then print it that way with a, with a map, whether it's a physical or digital map around it. Uh, but you're not locked into a, a fixed proportion uh, or aspect ratio, I guess is a proper term. And sometimes doing an eight by 10 on the 16 by 20 board is the right choice for particular images. It's it, it's what's going to make the image look as best as possible and as captivating as possible. Yeah, it's okay to use a square crop on a 16 by 20 yeah. Let, me, let me ask the judges this. What are your thoughts about, let's say somebody has a panorama picture or they have a square picture and then they want to make the image as large as possible. What are your thoughts about them using a bar above or below, above and below or to the sides of the images? I think it's better if you have to use a bar, say it's above and below that you should also use some amount of bar on the left and right. Correct. So make it look like it would be a mat around the image so it's not just a picture with bars along two edges. Yeah, let or the image not... float in a white space or a black space, but let yeah. the image float in a 16 by 20 space. 
Okay. You got an image that's 18 inches wide, uh, but it's only seven inches tall. Uh, Kurt's right. You need to put something on the left and right. If, let's say it's a, a horizontal. Uh, it, it, it looks kind of hinky if you just have uh, a black or white space at just mm -hmm. the top and the bottom. And I, I would also uh, agree with Kurt that strongly suggest that you put something all the way around in the way of a map. The reason I bring that up is it has been my observation over the years that there have been some times when a picture that was entered had the bars above and below just on the two edges and not all the way around that the judges might like love the image and want to give it a ribbon but because of the presentation with the bars that they decided not to give it a ribbon or an honorable mention so that can be the difference between an award-winning image versus something that just hangs in the gallery. So I know one thing I would like to do, and we're going to get to that soon, um, is we're going to do a, a little bit of, of, of a dry run. We have a, a bunch of members who submitted images, and I'm going to and I'm looking them up right now, uh, where the judges kind of get to look at them and critique them. Uh, and, and, and talk about how they may or may not judge judge them during a real uh, a competition. So, um, oh, one thing to Stephen, please. Yes, yes please. Um, go. I'm going to be logging off shortly because I got to head off to another meeting. But if possible, please do not approach the judges with your images and let them know who what your name is because. If the judges know who you are, they will have to recuse themselves during the judging right. process. Right. Well, well except for the except for the critique, obviously, you I mean, uh, which is we've already are done with the judges. And like you mentioned, Laura Lee, who had right. the 10 images the first year she entered, got nothing accepted, came back and just went uh, gangbusters. But she brought little four by sixes or five by sevens of all of her images. And, the, and she listened to all the people that critiqued her images. So at that point, yeah, it doesn't make a difference who you are, but I, but Lois's point on anonymity is 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 well taken. You know, I would love for you guys to talk about how an entrant needs to learn how to take critiques. <laughs> you know, how how are they? I want to share share with everybody the spirit that they need to need to be in if they're going to grow to become better artists. And like and, us all, they, they need to learn to, to learn. We're all, I mean, I, I know I'm only look 39 years old, but I, I, I'm actually just a little <laughs> bit older. And I'm the older I get, I mean, just talking to somebody about this this morning, the older I get, yeah. the more I realize I don't know. You don't know. Yeah. It's so, so just go in there as though you were in 10th grade. Anthony, any comments on that? Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. I mean, because I, I would go to those critiques, and even before I was doing uh, entering, I would, I would I, you know, my background was uh, while doing photography, also worked in in comics. So I would be at the San Diego Comic Con and standing in those long lines of getting right. portfolios reviewed. Um, so I had to learn how to grow a thick skin quick uh, yeah. because those critiques were very not necessarily constructive all the time. So <laughs> I had to learn how to handle. My work being criticized, and and that was a uh, you know, and that's something that I learned uh, how to accept and learn how to grow from that. And that, that's um, kind of what I wanted to hear that thick skin thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, Greg, I'm, 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 I'm seeing Greg agreeing. But what what do you what, what's your thoughts? <laughs> well, I, I, you know, one of the things that I, I've encountered, and uh, only a little bit, is people arguing with somebody trying to give them a critique, uh, defending themselves, and. Uh, and I think the attitude to go in for a critique is to just let, take in everything that you can. You don't have to, I mean, the judges that are critiquing are not 100% right all the time. That's opinions. But be open and be just be receptive to finding things that you can improve and to, to make yourself a better artist. Right. Um, Kurt and Jenny, what do you guys think? Well, I think... Um, it's always interesting when we find ourselves as friends or associates uh, in a position of critiquing each other, mm -hmm. which is always, <laughs> we create some hilarious moments. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, critiquing is a 
don't take it personally. I was just going to say, don't take it personally. Um, you're there to learn. And if you feel you have to defend it, then you probably didn't get your message across right. Right. That's exactly right. Can I add one more thing? It's like, I realize that not everybody may be ready to share their work, that they may not necessarily think that their work is ready for prime time. But even if you don't, if you're not, if you feel like you're not quite ready to share your work yet, it's still worthwhile to participate and to listen. Because by seeing other people's work, where you don't have that emotional attachment to their work, you can still learn by what the judge's critiques are. And that can help you develop your creative eye, your photographic eye, and your processing skills. Yeah, and I highly recommend that everybody goes to that those judges' critique sessions. Um, and Lois is so right. I think I noticed a different spirit in terms of the user wanting the judges to critique their work when the user doesn't really want critique. Oftentimes, they want you to praise their work. Um, and some I'm, I've been ask I've been finding that sometimes sometimes I need to ask a person a question. What type of critique do you want? And what 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 do you want me to comment on? Um, and let and let them kind of guide me. Um, sensitivities are really high nowadays um, because of social media. It's produced a whole new spirit in people. Back when I was in photography school, you listened attentively, attentively to what the master photographer had to teach you, and you knew your place as a student, and you were willing to take it and grow. Um, but the spirit has changed because social media has got everybody thinking they're great, <laughs> and no one can tell them anything else but that. So it leads to this combativeness and defensiveness when your work is critique. Um, John is so right. The, the more that I grow as an artist, the more I realize I don't know anything. And if you can keep that spirit, that openness to learn new stuff, and, and I know that's been difficult for photographers in general. Um, keeping this open spirited to learn new stuff. Um, be like a kid and then say, hey, you know, maybe let me let me try what this person has to offer. You know, maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't, but at least I tried. Every single time that I was critiqued when I was in photography school, someone would suggest a particular style of photography that I should get into. I said, oh, I'm not, I'm never gonna do that. I'm not interested in that. I thought I, thought I knew what I was talking about. Well, those things that I thought I would never do ended up being my bread and butter because I had to learn, I had to be well-rounded in photography, not just photography, but in art and in lighting and in composition. Compos the composition comes from the master painters, right? So the more I learned about, you know, fine art or the Renaissance art or just the, 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 the the past of photography, which again comes from the paintings, the med sculptors, the painters. Um, the more I, I became well-rounded, you know, the better I became in understanding what I should be doing as an individual. And only you can decide what that is. What what you, only you can decide what you should be doing. But that takes experimentation, and that takes openness to hear other ideas and other and and, and to and receive other inputs. Well said, Stephen. Thank you. All right. So we do now. I guess we do the, the critique. <laughs> How many images do we have? Um, not a whole lot. We've got about two, four, six submissions to each per submission. So we don't. So we don't have a whole lot. So we can give a little extra time for each one, um, if you like. I'll leave it up to you guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fill the screen with Adobe Bridge. And Gavin Phillips is actually in the photo industry, um, and he submitted a couple pieces. So I'm going to go inside his folder, and we're going to select one, and we will maximize that one like that. And all right, so 
I guess this is gonna for I guess Lois, what are we gonna do? We're gonna decide whether number one, whether mm -hmm. well, I think she just left. Oh, did she leave already? Right? Oh, she left. Oh, okay. All right. So mm -hmm. if Lois, you're showing an image, we're not I'm not seeing it. Oh, mm -hmm. you you're not seeing it. Why are you not seeing it? You gotta do it through Zoom. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm not sharing my screen. Ah, uh, that's right. I'm not sure my screen to Zoom. Okay, all right. See, the people on Twitch are seeing it, but you guys are. All right, hold on a second. Let me go to Zoom. Let me go share my screen. I keep forgetting. I got. I've got two platforms here. Uh, I want that one monitor number one and share. Okay, now you guys can see my screen, right? Oops. Birthday dinner invitation. What what about what about that birthday invitation? I'm listening. Yeah. It's my birthday. Well, well, you're 39 now. You're good. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, now, to those who are watching, we don't know who the artist is. Um, so we're going to critique it, every image on its own merit. So we're gonna let the judges talk. Just let them talk about it. You know what do they like, what do they not like. You know what's what's compelling. If it's not compelling, uh, is it different? Um, would it hang? Would it not hang? Why and why not? Well, I'll start. All I, right. I, I like this one. Um, this is uh, this would you know at first look it. Go feels like it goes into the digital compositing category. It uh, you know integrates a number of images together. Uh, has a very strong mystical quality to it. The even though you've got overlapping elements here, the the face is clear and the, the form of the body. Uh, the it, it's. It's a little symmetrical, but that that doesn't really bother me. It's beautifully integrated. I love the colors, the warmth of it. There's a, a few things going on uh, between the uh, the birds in the tree and the background and the girl. Uh, the the thing that stands out as a distraction for me a little bit is the mist. Uh, in the middle, just below the base of the tree, there's this fog going across that feels a little uh, uh, like out of place or un un unfocused relative to all the other stuff. So that that is the, the one thing that really pulls me out of the illusion that's going on. Those would be, I, it would hang for me. I'd want to see the print. Yeah, I, I think it would hang too. Uh, is she on center, or should she be on center? It, it looks like she's centered. Pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. You know, uh, I, I, there's a reason they don't let me judge the composite category. <laughs> I, I, I'm more of a Rembrandt guy than a Picasso kind of guy. So, uh, I like the image, don't get me wrong, but I, I did want to mention something in presentation. If it gets accepted to tier two, uh, you need to choose your background or your matte color carefully. I'm just going to go out on the limb and say I would not choose a white. Of course, as everybody knows, or if you don't, you only have two choices in the matte color, uh, digital or, or physical, whether it's white or black. I, I Personally, I wouldn't use a white matte on this. I think it would totally distract from the image. Yeah, so I think this is a good example. Oh. Uh, of the of uh, our general conversation, there's a narrative. Um, the photographer has something in mind. It's unique. Um, if I was doing it, of course, I might do it differently. I might do her with less translucence, and I might do the tree with more translucence, uh, but. That's just me, right? And so, but I think the the general idea is um, is pretty strong, and um, I agree with with Grace's point that it, I think it would hang. Anthony. I agree. I think it has a, a wonderful mood to it. Um, mm -hmm. The comment about the fog, I think one thing that might 
alleviate that distraction is to extend the fogginess downward. Mm -hmm. I keep getting caught on our hands being there right. as, as bright as the oh. face. Yeah. And I think if you darken that down or make it more of a hazy on the lower section, um, then the focus would be more up in the face and the tree and the birds. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Even if the, the value of the tree were a little bit even darker, it would also have to pull those different, you know, background, middle ground, foreground elements together even more and, and also drop the value of the hands and uh, legs back into the ground a little bit more. That would definitely help to bring the composition even tighter. I see also there's a, a masking problem down toward the right side on the, um, on the leg, right, right on the the knee. edge of the leg there, there's yeah. some rectangles that are, are just, it's it's sloppy masking. Um, oh, we so do. For those kinds of distractions. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I just noticed that. Okay. But 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 this is now. I also judge the uh, the digital compositing category, and mm -hmm. um, this is something that they the sloppy compositing here. This is something we would see during peer, uh, tier one, and we would send a note back to the artist saying we noticed this problem down by your leg, which you're compositing. You no, know, we suggest you 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 kind of mask it off more um, precisely. And then the artist, if they take her advice, they will do it and send it back as a final print. And hopefully it'll look much better. But we can't make a lot of comments. Uh, um, we don't have time to make a lot of detailed Great. comments about yeah. all the things. So as artists, you've got to learn to look for those things, which is why these critiques are really valuable because I, I, when I'm working on something, I get used to it and I'm, I forget all the details in it so having somebody who catches these things is really very valuable okay so in essence we all agree that it's going to hang mm -hmm. at, at at a minimum all right let's let's take a look at another one of his pieces hmm. Well, our eye definitely is focused on the wall, uh, which, of course, is, you know, 90 percent of the problem, as we talked about earlier, as far as composition is concerned. Mm -hmm. I'm all I'm just this is, again, going out on a limb, no pun intended. Uh, would it help or hinder to darken the upper left and the upper right hand corner to give a little more of a vignette like you're seeing at the bottom mm -hmm. uh, left and bottom right again that's more of a question this is not a category i'm strong yet well it could be a problem if the corners end up being gray true so it's more of a sepia look though but i mean i'm not talking like you know anything heavy-handed i'm just kind of throwing that out there I don't mind the, the corners or the colors they are. Um, okay. I think it's a very striking image. Um, I do get drawn to what's going on on the right-hand border. Um, there's a I lot of- right-hand border is a distraction. Yeah. yeah, it's a little distracting with all the um, whatever trees or snow or whatever's down there that's kind of blobby. Would this work better as a more square uh, uh, final product, if you will, uh, like the, nice. the previous image? I so, like the aspect ratio of it, you but know, I okay. do agree that those, those, the, the detail at the edges pulls away from the main subject. Um, so yeah. softening that stuff, just blurring. Is it, it, the, the trees in the background are really nice. The mist has a, a, a strong, like just a, a atmosphere to it and the the noise the the detail in the reflection in the water is a little strong but i do it i kind of like the uh, the the landscape okay That's I think the vertical trees coming through the wolf i think that works as a narrative uh but the tree that's coming through the wolf's 
the left eye are the, the right eye and to the right in the picture. I think that tree coming down to his eye is not. It's for me. It's um. It's not a good element to this picture. Uh, well, I like the kind of graphic nature of it. Yeah, it's definitely great. I think when you have um, layered elements that come in front of the subject's eyes, like the, the line that Kurt just mentioned, that can be, be distracting because the eyes are so much what our brains are right. programmed to look at. And when you have things that that's really the main subject, the face, you don't want things pulling away from that. So would this one hang? I think so. Yeah, I think it would hang. Okay. Definitely. With 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 some comments, of course. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's let's take a look at the the next artist. All right. This image is going to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really cool image and it tells us that in, in, and earlier I mentioned the tree example and Greg says well don't crop it out because it may be part of the story uh, and this is a really good example that not only is the uh, uh, our, sense, our, our focal point in our eye wants to go to the guy in the red uh, uh, you know to the right of center uh, but then it's like, oh, hey, there's all sorts of fun stuff going on here. The boat and the flowers, the two dogs and and and, and the lady up uh, in the top left hand corner. I had to think with my left and right. Uh, I'm, all, I'm kind of wondering, and this is just me, if there you could open up the top just a little bit so there's a little more space between the lady and the top of the image but i understand right. that if you do that it does get rid of that really cool vertical that's kind of going in the green vertical that's going into the edge of the print so i was kind of six one way half dozen the other i would not crop anything from the bottom okay it's a cool image yeah. a lot of narrative going on here this is a really great example of the narrative story really works with the judges I don't think anybody's seen this image in their life before, so. No. I, I, mean, I would definitely uh, accept this if you're too. Yeah. Um, I, I, I question the, I, it feels like it's a, a composited, but I can't, I can't really tell what, I mean, I guess it, this, Knowing the photographer, I kind of doubt it, but that's just because we knew her name. Other than that, it would—you're right. Um, Where do you see the? You, are you talking about the dogs? Probably the dogs. The dogs most uh, prominently, and the elements up above the stairs feel kind of pasted on top. Um, the boat almost feels pasted in. And that that's not, you know, that's not a problem. It's just it kind of feels that way. But I like the composition. And I like the narrative. They interesting elements, and and there there are very few distractions. And it, it, the, so it's 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 pretty clear. But there's it, there's just some things that feel a little strange in the edges of things. This is going to be an interesting judging uh, sessions, interesting judging sessions because of what Greg just said, uh, that a lot of the stuff that may not have been possible, uh, well, would have been possible with a lot of work in the past, now are possible. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, with no yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Greg, would you request uh, 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 the original? Raw file on this? No. No, and I, and I think uh, at a, at a first tier, I, I'm not sure exactly where this would go in the uh, in the categories whether it would be in compositing or in people color people um, or you know it could be in a number of categories I suppose. Well, it's a cool image. Great narrative. Yeah. 
it's very it's the figures are clear and that the the quality of is, is nice and the colors are interesting okay so then it's a hang yes all right so let's take a look at uh, the next one Looks like me and my partying days. <laughs> when you had hair. <laughs> That's right. And I wore a crown. <laughs> well, I assume the white scribe line won't be there, so. All right. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Kurt, about the white scribe line, because Again, this is probably not a, the, a 16 by 20 ratio, but it's, it's darn close. But if you're going to put a mat around it, I would think you would want to go black. So the question is, do you ignore the key line uh, or have a black uh, inner core if you've got a physical map, or do you leave the white? And I think Kurt's right. I think it distracts from the image that I would personally prefer not to see the key line. Yeah, it's it's not even, and at tier one, that just feels unprofessional. It catches my eye and pulls me out of the picture. So I would say, don't put the key line in. At, at, uh, certainly not at the first level. And then when you submit your print, just make sure the, the matting looks proper. And, and that brings up another sure. point. You mentioned the word professional. We know this is a contest that doesn't. You know, most of the people that are involved in entering the contest are not professionals, but we are. And it's a, this is what the contest is all about. And, and it's an international exhibition of photography. So that being the question, things like what Greg just mentioned are gonna be critical. Right, and, and the, the, um, the exhibition is a professional photography exhibition. It's, not, right. it's not an amateur's. Although the vast majority of people that are entering are, are, are serious amateurs. And yeah, that's, a that's at correct. It, still, yeah. yeah. You know, we're talking about professional level of work. Um, uh, so we're, yeah. we're not, not saying you're not professional, um, but the, the, um, the, there are elements that are less than what we expect at that at this level of an international competition. Right. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that word. I, I think that was well well said, but, you know, so. So as far as the image, I, I, I love the textures, especially in the, the body and some in the face. There's, a, there's some, um, it, it kind of feels a little like Klimt in the, the, yeah. the way the face is uh, cropped out there and you know it has an abstract quality to it i see for me as a digital painter and a person working in you know i've done a lot of stuff like this there's some cloning uh to the um to my left as a, looking at it to the side of her oh, yeah. um there's like repetition in there and there's repetition in the hair from the cloning process that is it stands out feeling like a like cloned uh textures right. and and it's uh, one of the things that i i look at in um is there something that is there anything that stands out as looking like a per uh, it, uh, a process or a tool if i see that process or the tool before i am drawn in or if it distracts from the main subject, it um, it weakens the piece, and th those repetitions that look like the clone brush, obviously, to me, just they, they bring it down a little level. So uh, the whatever's going on over in the left side in the body and in the, in the, the the textures in the body is beautiful, and and it doesn't have that kind of repetition to it. And so I like that stuff more than I like the stuff on the side of the head. And the head is so important to the, the character in the piece that those distractions right next to the head are, are kind of obvious to me. This reminds me so much of a combination of Klimt and Bacon. 
I had bacon for yeah. breakfast. Not that bacon. Uh, I'm not familiar with those names. Maybe you can give us 20 Go seconds and tell us about them. Gustav Klimt and Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon was more of the American abstractionist movement. Okay. Like it was more a part of that. And Klimt is more, Klimt was very um, fashion oriented. How do you see that? a lot of go. Klimt is K L I M P T. Oh, K L I M T. Okay, okay, K L I M T. It's exactly like my last name with an I instead of an A. Oh, okay. And then Francis Bacon. Look that up right now on, on, on Google. Yeah, when I, I'm familiar with yeah. the name. I just am not familiar with the word. Yeah, okay. Gustav Klimt, yeah. yeah. I definitely agree on the textures on, on the, the body as well. Like It's, it's almost like the, 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 the edge work of the textures, that fidelity isn't as sharp. Maybe that's intentional. Um, but definitely looking at how the quality of that texture work is in the body and and how it almost blurs and softens as it gets towards the bottom and sides. Um, I, I, it would be great to see that a little bit more consistent with how rich that detail is in the body. But it, again, it may be intentional to have it softer off of the edges and have it almost not that gauzy blurred, but um, it definitely feels a lot softer uh, in detail. But I do think if that texture quality was consistent around the piece, it, uh, to me, it'd be even, even stronger. Mm -hmm. Our eye naturally can, you know, when we're looking around an image, it can soften as we move our eyes around. Um, but I definitely think if it had that, it would be, it would be you know, even stronger in, in my eyes. Yeah. What so, do you guys think of the crop where the frame is cropped differently on the left than it is on the right? That bothers me a little bit. The bottom bothers me a little bit. <clears throat> goes into that black <coughs> yeah more black on the bottom than the top. yeah oh yeah it does I'm, I'm not sure that the frame helps mm. at all huh. but it i mean kind of does but the the uneven unevenness of it distracts a little yeah i don't know why the unevenness is there so. yeah it doesn't seem to have a purpose so this one may not hang? Might, might not. Might not. Okay. Okay. I think the artist is onto something, but yeah, I agree. This, it, this is yeah. a tough. I, I tough agree. I, I, I agree with you. I think it's probably unfinished at this point. I think I think these, I think the artist is definitely onto something. Here. I, I'm loving the I'm loving the piece. I'm I'm loving the texture, the feeling of it, but it feels like this. It's just something a little bit more to pull it all together. Mm -hmm. You see why they don't allow day drinking at the contest while we're judging? <laughs> Bastards. Really? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll right. Go, we'll go to the next one. Okay, so one hang, one may not hang. So we'll go to next. Hmm. Very interesting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This is really well done. Uh, All right. It, uh, I, my, the first thing that jumps out at me is I'm wondering if mm -hmm. there should be just a, a smidgen more open on the left-hand side so that the curl of the paper isn't quite touching the edge. Uh, particularly if you're going to be doing a, a, a physical mat, it's, it will actually more than likely dig in a sixteenth of an inch or what have you. Um, I love the shadow detail. Um, I love the color scheme. Uh, I just like the whole thought of this one. Uh, it's uh, and I'm not uh, not normally an abstract guy, uh, but this really appeals to me. Uh, it, it, I'm also wondering, and this is just being very very technical, and, and I'm not sure that it's it's really the the, the truth here most images tend to do well with a touch of black in them somewhere. And I'm just wondering if maybe in some part of the shadow area, you could actually bring just a little more black in there instead of that dark mid-tones. But that's being very big. Riching up the mid-tones a bit. You know? Yeah, yeah. This is nice. Wow. That's very nice. Yeah. I think maybe some more contrast could even even pop those colors even more. Maybe, so yeah. maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Good point, uh, Anthony. Very good point. I, I, I strongly agree with that left edge is... It needs some space over there. How do you guys feel about the right corners, top and bottom? Um, 
I might darken the upper left a little bit, that, that sky blue a little bit, and then there's kind of a little pink uh, uh, area down at the bottom right. Is that what you're talking right. about, Kurt? Yeah, I was thinking, I didn't know whether or not it should be darkened or should, it should be cropped in from the right. So, But they, they pull the eye away from the composition. So. No, I don't like the little isolated triangle on the bottom corner. I think it's a little just the bottom right corner. <clears throat> yeah, the bluish pink okay. bottom. Okay. Um, and I it feels to me like the the sharpness in the lower part in the zigzags should match the sharpness that's in the upper part. Oh, the image gets softer as it goes down. Yeah. yeah. And I would like to see more detail throughout the image. Well, is it a reflection though from the bottom? Yeah, it looks like this is a reflection. I think it is a reflection. Like it's set on a piece, a mirror, or a piece yeah. of glass, or something. True, so that's true. That would explain the softness. It still bothers him. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's it. That's right. <laughs> Don't be yeah, a good, good, good catch. <laughs> Those that are listening will see what happens when we're judging, particularly in tier one. We may not spend that much time on what we're doing here. We'll go accept or reject pretty much within thirty to second 30 seconds to one minute uh, my immediate reaction was i would accept this just so you know and even upon thought i would still accept it uh, but i agree with 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 uh, those that mentioned the corners on the right hand side uh I, I think those need to be darkened because kurt's right it does pull your eye away from it but i would accept this in an instant yeah it, it caught my eye immediately and you know, the impact i i think all the comments are valid in terms of making it a little stronger but i probably would accept it for okay. tier one but those those things near the edge are, are really important especially in an abstract image like this where you really you have strong lines and patterns in the middle and you've got these things out at the edge and the, the things that are too close to the edge that just pull away that could be a new title for a horror movie the things near the edge Ooh. <laughs> I'm scared already. Uh, something that I should mention, is, and Greg touched on this earlier, that we in Tier 1 have the ability to make comments. And if we were to make comments on this and accept it to Tier 2, I, I'm pretty oh. sure the three quick comments would be open up left side, darken oh. left, and, uh, left and right hand corners. Or top and bottom right. Yeah, I'm sorry. What did I Whatever, yeah. But I mean, it, we don't have a whole bunch of time to type those in, and some of us type like like gorillas, you know, two fingers <laughs> at a time. So, uh, you know, that being the case, I just wanted to throw that out that we would like to see it as a print is what happens when we get accepted to tier two with a few uh, suggestions. All right, all right, we go on to the next one. That looks like the water system in our house, <laughs> <laughs> which we just completely replaced, but that's another story. Another example of you like a little more room on the right, but I think it's a really cool image. <laughs> oh, where you talk about the globe is on the bottom right there? Yeah, again, they, it pinches the edge, and that pinch is always creates a little tension, right? So, sure. Kind of the same as what John was saying in the previous image, but the image is kind of cool. I like the color on it. Yeah, I do too. It's great. The light is nice. The it's it's clear. Look, I mean, it's not obvious what it is. I know what it is because I've seen. I don't know if it was this artist, but I've seen the technique and the similar stuff. But it's. Uh, well, I think it's pretty. It would probably get through for tier one for sure definitely wow. and yeah those things on the edge again you know leaving a little more breathing room you know. we we talked about cropping earlier and someone brought this up that you know if you're gonna crop watch your crop uh, uh that you don't have things squeezing as as kurt i think was the word he used he used where we're squeezing the edge and uh, uh 
particularly if you are using a physical mat, chances are if you take this print and then, it, uh, you know, you've got an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch overlap between the edge of the print and where your your, mat, your physical mat is, it's going to be, it's going to cover up that little space that's the minimal space that's already there in that bottom right hand lobe, lobule, whatever you want to call it. So, okay. Well, There's a, there are a lot of little white spots that I would probably take out with a spot editing tool. Really? Where? Oh, just some little things that look like uh, tiny little spots. Like if you look in the globe in the center, there's a, a white spot in the upper triangle. Oh, oh, oh okay. I see. Those, that, that kind of fine editing stuff, uh, you can see little white spots over um, on the right hand side. There's a couple of white spots that uh, come down a little bit. But Bert, you might want to talk about the difference between white spots and specular highlights because there's a lot of specular highlights in here that are really, really important. Yeah, I'm not talking about the specular highlights. I'm talking about the things that almost look like dust. So. Okay. 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 All right. So this one, hey. Absolutely. All right. So let's go to the next one. The framing on this is is excellent. Uh, the first thing that jumps out all, at me is, and, and Anthony used the word contrast, and he's right. This this image needs more snap. It's almost too flat when you get past the chair or the swinging chair in the middle, but not so much the, uh, the contrast that you're washing out the details, uh, the highlight detail in, in the uh, swinging chair. I, I like this shot. I like what's in it. I agree with the, the editing questions about some of that editing. Uh, is there too much flat gray? That might be an issue. But it, the subject, the content is it's kind of cool. It is. You know, there is a lot of stuff to pull you in and make you think about. So. The yeah, photographer became is, is a good photographer on this shot. And, and, and again, another minor point, bottom left-hand corner, perhaps those two little white or right. whatever sticking out could be darkened and or cloned out, which is acceptable, by the way. Yeah, for me, it's just too gray. It yeah. yeah. The contrast. Yeah. I wonder if I immediately go to the chairs. Depending on what else would be in this category, I would probably accept it with the note that increase the contrast, but don't wash out the highlights right. along mm -hmm. those lines. Again, uh, there is black in the image, particularly below the porch uh, right. and in the windows above it, but it's just, it, it looks, uh, there's too much mid tone. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's actually any true white. No, there no, is. No, but I don't know if there really needs to be. No, it doesn't need to be. Doesn't Agree. It? No, it doesn't yeah. need to be. I don't think the background needs to be that flat. And yeah. It, yeah. No. It work That's what it is. All right. We just separate separate these tones out in the background and get some of the the the, the D black or the D max going back there to, to to allow everything else in the background to have some depth and allowing mm -hmm. the white to be the main subject matter. Right. Hey, there should be story wise. In that, sorry, we're closed, or at least something brighter. <laughs> <laughs> I think this place should stay closed. <laughs> what? No, oh, yeah, this is definitely, definitely stay close. <laughs> Are you kidding? This would be the kind of place I would order the cheeseburger deluxe. Trust me, uh, trust yeah, me. Exactly. I, 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 I've actually done that before. We went to our ghost towns in Death Valley, and yeah. I did a scouting trip with my assistant, and we were in where we were in Goldfield. I think we were in Goldfield, and there's a old shack like this it was a restaurant that was open so let's go inside i'm sure it's going to be good and it sucked oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no we're not going in there <laughs> all right next one so that one hangs right i would i would hang it with the, the, the quick note to okay. contrast and, and less flatness in, in the background all right all right let's go let's pull this down and go there there we go <laughs> Man, if the cracks on this guy's face could tell a story. Uh, I'm finding this really, really interesting. Uh, 
I, I, I can immediately tell you right now that I, if I were in this category, I would accept it. The only suggestion I can come up with right now is perhaps you could pop his eyes just a little more. Yeah. Just a smidge. And I mean, you don't want him to look like, you know, Night of the Living Dead or anything, but. <laughs> uh, sure you do. Which, of course, you can do. But, I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't, it probably wouldn't get yes. very far. But I mean, every picture telling the story, this one really tells a story. Yeah, there's so much detail in the skin and, and fabric that, and the, you're right, the eyes, which are always so important in portraits, could pop a little bit more if you, if you do the right thing with them. I'd like to, while we're talking about eyes, mention something particularly in the mammals category, non-human mammals category. Uh, that you pop those eyes, particular, uh, particularly, particularly, I can say it, particularly on uh, cats, big, big, small cats, whatever, uh, or birds, the same thing. Um, unless it's just a black eye with a white speculum highlight, but a lot of these birds have the most incredibly colorful eyes, and that's the kind of thing that will make an image uh, place get a ribbon. Uh, is that you have paid attention to those little details that like we're talking about where you make make it to tier two but if that image and there's 16 other bird images or or, or whatever and the eyes on a few of those have, have popped if you will or increased in brightness just a bit that it'll make all the difference in the world between placing and getting a ribbon and just hanging which don't get me wrong just hanging is very very you should be a, a congratulated for that but you know, at that point, you want to start thinking about how can I get a ribbon and make your image better. It's more than right. just about the contest. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. Go ahead. There's a very, very small. The the masking of the hair is some some hairs just above the ear on the left, um, where there's there's just floating little highlights and that. It's not that that wouldn't be really the way those show up, but they look like they're floating in space a little bit. Right. Yeah, so, so and there's, there's some on the right, and the, the top that that look like stragglers, like like masking errors. So just be careful on those kinds of things, and those, some of that can be cleaned up. And then there's there's like, I and, and this is kind of part of the story. There's there's uh, like. Uh, dandruff or, or like dust and things on the, the sweater, which are, um, they're sort of part of the character, but you, you could we're just, not talking dust like Kurt was talking about in the previous image. No, because that's like dust in the photo. This is real, I mean, this is real stuff that's fallen on his yeah. clothes and tells part of who he is. And sure. this is. This is more part of the picture than aberration. So, but but it is a, I, I guess it, I would be okay with it, but it's also something to consider that those kind of things do take away from the, the face a little bit. Right. And these are just minuscule criticisms at this point. I think, I'm, I'm thinking the problem here is not so much the dust, the problem here is that the entire shirt, the entire sweater, the contrast um, uh, level in the shirt competes with his face. So we need to bring the contrast down for the entire sweater so that it goes down to a darker gray. And therefore these highlights of the dandra don't stand out anymore. They become muted down and part of the sweater while his face pops out. Yeah. You know, I could be okay with the body being darker. What's going on with the skin at the V of the shirt? In here? Yeah. I, looks, that's just, I think that's just... I think they had a different on. texture than the... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just that. sun spots on it. Uh, you know, but skin... Uh, I don't know what that's called, but it's like no, that. I don't. I don't mean the skin. Uh, I mean, it's it's it looks it looks blurry and softer. Yeah, that's good. Right there at the V. Oh, no, the V at the skin. Yeah, not the zipper. Go up there. 
the skin, that triangular shape of the skin that looks softer compared to. But the button on the shirt is also softer at that point. It's quite a transition between the, uh, yeah. the skin yeah. and that triangle of skin. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Tell them next time don't include any skin. <laughs> So this will hang, right? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next person. We've got two more left. You know, it's a, it's a pretty sunset, and uh, it's got lots of uh, 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 stuff going for it. Uh, the late, great David King used to have a scene, and it was... Gosh, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was uh, something, well, well, he used to say this about sunsets that they're all they're all pretty and what have you, but that you have to be in the moment to really appreciate it. And I'm trying to figure out for me, what is what is my eye supposed to go to here? Now, again, it depends on the categories in it, too, I would imagine. But uh, yeah. My initial reaction would be to reject it. Right. I, I could be okay. wrong on that. It doesn't uh, have a strong point it of needs focus. Something, yeah, it, exactly. It needs something to anchor the image, something other than just the strong sunset, sunset in the clouds. I don't know what that is. Uh, and, uh, you know, but. Well, going back to the uniqueness that we were talking about earlier, yes. it's, it's not particularly unique. I, it, it's it's pretty, and, and I I see this in a doctor's office or something abstract sunsets. <laughs> and I don't I don't mean that as an insult. It's just as far as the photo competition. Okay. I, I like the brush strokiness to two of it. Yeah, to the sky and the and the ground as well. Yeah. But it's not yeah. remarkable. So this one's not going to hang. Well, I would reject it in tier one, but that's just me. Okay. And, and again, for those that are listening, keep in mind that there are actually three judges per category, and discussions can and will be heated between them. One of those judges may absolutely love this image, uh, and the two two judges may not think it should advance but two judges that say it shouldn't be advanced will over not overrule wrong word will outvote the judge that likes it so you know it may be that i may not like this or think it don't get me wrong i like the image i just don't think it should be advanced to tier two but the other two judges regardless of what i think say i i love it and it should advance so you know just wanted to throw that out Okay. There's also a, a thing in the tier one. We're throwing, uh, we're keeping 30 percent, approximately 30 percent of the images. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there will be a few borderline images that uh, we'll come back to. Like there's, there's technically nothing wrong with this. Uh, so if we were on the cusp and we needed to fill three images in from the stuff that we had said, no, we're not going to hang this, then this might be. Kind of on the borderline there. It's not going to win right. awards, and but um, it it could get in on a situation like that where the judges are saying, "Okay, we want we need twelve pictures for this category, and this one's, you know, it's 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 okay." And and that will be dependent. So might move it in. And of course, okay. and that will be dependent on the quality of the images that you get for that category. So if the competition is, if, if most of the people submit things that are like outstanding, this may not get in at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I was going to go there. When you're dealing yeah. with a category that's very saturated, like seascapes or some Around of bears. Batteries, categories, you <laughs> need to really stand out or they're not going to, it's just going to be another pretty sunset. And Okay, let's go, go on to the next. All right, let's go on to the next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, 
I'm finding the same issues It's the here. same thing. It's almost the same shot. One is painted and the other one isn't. And I think uh, that Jenny mentioned something about don't enter. If you got hummingbird, maybe it was Lois who talked about one person in or a nice hummingbird thing, and then they had four other hummingbirds, and, and they were all almost interchangeable. Uh, I think that this particular one is interchangeable with the one with, with the last. And I again, I don't mean that as an insult. Please have a thick skin. Uh, I'm, I'm just giving you my opinion. Okay. Perhaps like on this particular <laughs> image, if you cropped in to where the birds are or something, again, I'm just throwing that out. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I really don't. Yeah, they're not sharp enough. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. True, also. And the whites, the highlights seem like they're a mm. bit, bit blown out. Yeah, yeah. Well, those birds are definitely not sharp enough. No, I, I switched <laughs> my solo cup from uh, uh, water to maybe something a little stronger. <laughs> okay. All right. So, given these two images, I actually like the first one better. Like the first yeah. one better. Good point. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go to the next next one. I think it's our is it our last one? Oh, it's our last one. Yes. Oh. Yeah, you guys don't have to review my work, but I, I thought we were just supposed to submit works. <laughs> but <laughs> by all by all means, critique if, if you do see things. But I know the digital painting is is in a sub uh, is it in, in one of the um there is no included. No. There is no so, but the first thing I think of is this is a bird, is it a plane? No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's Tony messing around. Tony. I really do. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you one thing I do like about this is, again, this is an old Ansel Adams trick, amongst others, is to darken those corners. Where does our eye go to? It goes to the, the contrail and the Superman or whatever that is. Uh, yeah. I, I, I can't tell. Uh, with the with the cool clouds and the sunset, uh, if there were if this were entered in the contest and was acceptable, then yeah, I would I would definitely accept it. Appreciate it. It's it's yeah, it's all digitally painted. So I know that's no longer a category, but I just I thought we were supposed to submit work. So I was like, oh yeah, we can take it. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you did. I did. I'm I'm glad you submitted this. Uh, it's a good example, even you know, talking about it in photographic terms, composition is, is spectacular. It's spot on. It's off center a little bit. It's the light really pulls you in. Those darkened edges are appreciate it. Very nice. Um, the the line of the whatever zooming up there, Superman. It's <laughs> it, it splits the composition nicely. I appreciate it. Thank you. All of it. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I love his 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 choices, his decisions, and what he did with his highlights, because in reality, the clouds here will be illuminated by the by the uh, the warm lighting. But he chose not to illuminate them because he wanted your eye, the cool colors, to lead your eye into the warm colors. And right. to see the backlight on some of the clouds uh, below the sunset, too, which is really, very cool. Yeah, wonderful job. Appreciate it. Yeah, I definitely don't want to uh, create too many conflicts. You know, I, don't, I want the focus to be, you know, you know, I don't want to put like an arrow to what to look at. So I try to you know, use lighting to help to, to set that up. Okay. Kids, listen to Tony. He's right. That's right. <laughs> Same, same with this one. Interesting. Even though this is a, it's more of a matte painting. So there are, like I shot photos of, uh, well, not real buildings, but windows when you're in downtown San Diego. Uh, no, no then, windows, um, only matte. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's why your computer don't work. <laughs> 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 Insane with wet down. I shot wet down in alleys here and and and, and downtown and and uh, you know composite all that stuff together. So it's the same kind of you know lots of lots of compositing and, and you know and painting and and yeah it's a, it's a lot. But please. Nice. Hmm. Well, it, it, again, it's the 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 use of light, whether it's you know. Uh, 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 a, a digital painting or what have you is what's important here that again we have those darkened corners which just makes all the difference in the world there's plenty of separation between the door and a window whatever that is and mm -hmm. everything else that's around it and those little kind of uh, i don't know the, the the light beams that are coming off to the left and the right of the door really work well as well as the uh 
solid, more solid light beam coming out the top. So basically what these are are bridges to portals. Yes. Right? So this exactly. is a bridge, that's a bridge, this is a bridge to the portal. Okay. Mm -hmm. To other to other worlds. Yeah, definitely. It's all, all you know, I'm all science fiction, so <laughs> are you into anything you need to are you into steampunk at all? Uh, I love all that stuff. Cyberpunk, okay. cool. steampunk, so yeah. All right. Very, very I, I'd accept it if we had a category for it. Yeah, I know. I know that's no longer a category. So <laughs> used uh, to be. I, I do appreciate it. Yeah, it used to be, but I understand why it wouldn't be nowadays. So, which is completely understandable. Well, I think I think the reason I think she the reason Lois decided not to have the uh, uh, the digital art category was be primarily because we weren't getting that many submissions. Well, but, multiple reasons that the, there. It's not photography, even though it might incorporate a little bit of photography. Yeah. It's, uh, this category was about digital painting. Back in 2000, when they started the digital categories, there was no other ex way to exhibit digital art at the fair. They weren't accepting it downstairs. But right. They do accept it downstairs now. So there is oh, a way to do it. Yeah. So okay. now they these downstairs. Although I did hear from somebody, and I can't remember who it was, that, that they've been talking downstairs about removing the digital categories, which um, is concerning to me. That's uh, uh, I, I hope they don't, but right. they have accepted it for the last 10 years at least, I think. Okay. Well, I think that is it. And we, we, we literally hit the clock three minutes before we were <laughs> supposed to stop. So perfect timing. You guys are incredible. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for everybody who submitted work. Uh, Gavin Phillips, Gavin Phillips, uh, Evan, Joel Nevers, uh, Ralph Vasquez, uh, Rob Pinavilla, Ted Legit, and uh, Tony Washington. That was great. So, and thank you. Will there be a recording of this coming out? Yes, there is. And I it, it, posted it on my. San Diego County Fair FAQ page. Yeah, it'll be through the Photoshop Users Group when I send out the next uh, announcement. List, so. Yeah, you're on that list, right. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, John. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Thank Jennifer. You. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Kurt. And then we had one other person, Cynthia, that was here. She had to drop out. She had an emergency call. Thank mm -hmm. you to her also. Um, this is great. So um, um, every month, San Diego Photoshop Users Group. We're here, and um, and we just keep for those who are watching. Keep your eye on the uh, uh, on the Twitch announcements, and uh, and you'll catch us here every month. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the stream to Twitch.